really gets frustrating <laughs> with this Phillies team. Oh my god. <laughs> we lost another game to Gabe Kapler's Giants, man. I hate Gabe Kapler with a full-blown passion. I do. I really hate Gabe Kapler so much. The Phillies lose this game to the San Francisco Giants by a score of 10-7. to And the Giants, they hit five home runs in this game. Five. Connor Brogdon, he was basically perfect coming into this game, and tonight simply just did not have it. He didn't. And I know he was bound to have a game where he gave up runs. He had six appearances before this game where he was scoreless, so had no <laughs> zero earned run average. So yeah, there was eventually going to be a game where he gave up a run. But geez, he gave up six runs, two three-run shots in the eighth inning. Yeah, maybe he was kept out there too long, but geez. Yeah, Brogdon especially did not happen tonight. And a night where the offense does actually give you six runs. And one person from the bullpen blows up. Because honestly, I thought the rest of the bullpen was pretty fine. Wheeler didn't, later in the ball game, didn't have his best stuff. Gave up the home run ball as well. Gave up three home runs to the Giants. Two in the fourth, one in the sixth inning. So yeah, Wheeler definitely didn't have his best night either. But, man, this is frustrating. This is frustrating. I mean, like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm just, like, in shock in awe, and I'm just gut-wrenched at what I just witnessed at the end of that ball game because the Phillies are up 6-4 to four in the eighth inning. Connor Brockton comes out. He's been so good to start this season. I'm expecting nothing <laughs> less than that, and everything just implodes. It completely does. And then Reese Hoskins' final home run in the ninth inning to quote-unquote spark the comeback, but eh, regardless. But yeah, the lineup two in tonight's ball game definitely wasn't ideal. Because it just definitely wasn't shaped out the way you planned it to be. Because you get McCutcheon a day off. You get Reese a day off. Joyce comes in in left field. Brad Miller comes in at first base. And the lineup shaping just looked really weird and out of place. But hey, that lineup technically did give you six runs. But also another scary situation that Gene Segura goes down. Leaves after the second inning with an injury after running the first base on a play. So hopefully nothing is too serious there. But... Definitely a scary situation, hence that Gene Segura has been one of our more hotter hitters the past couple of weeks. But I would say, ugh, besides the frustration of this game, it's really frustrating to lose like this, and especially losing to Gabe Kapler two times in a row. And now Gabe Kapler has won a series in Philadelphia against you, and ugh, and this is definitely going to be a game where it sparks the jo the fire Joe Girardi crowd, and I'm not going to get into that subject because I think that's just idiotic and stupid at this point. The way the city tries to run coaches, managers out of town, I'm not going to get into that subject. But, yeah, just not the best of games, and you're also just str you're also a little bit, I guess, haltered because you're missing a couple of key guys in the bullpen especially in that situation in the eighth inning would Connor Brogdon have stayed in that long if you or would he been in the eighth inning regardless if you don't have a guy like well if you have a guy like Archie Bradley and, or a Jose Alvarado in the bullpen would Connor Brogdon be put into that spot in the eighth inning and yes he definitely deserved to go into that type of high impact situation just because of how good he's been this season but if Archie Bradley or a Jose Alvarado were in the bullpen and not on the injured list or the COVID reserved list would Connor Brogdon even be put in that situation so that's also something to think about right there on the other decisions that Joe Girardi has to go in, into as well and maybe like should have Coonrod come back out in that inning because he pitched so well in the seventh he didn't really pitch that have that many pitches so I wonder wondered why he wouldn't have come out for a second one but I'm not going to overly deep dive into the decisions by Joe Girardi because yes he was a little scrapped but the lineup yet yeah, definitely wasn't ideal and then once you go down by that that the uh, 10-6 in the eighth inning then you take Brad Miller out of the game you put Andrew Knapp in at second base so basically you're just getting the other guys rested up then get ready for tomorrow because man, even though if tomorrow is even going to be played because tomorrow apparently is supposed to be thunderstorms here in Philadelphia and I'm going to be really pissed if that happens because I am supposed to go to the game tomorrow so I'm going to be really pissed if that game gets rescheduled because I was actually looking forward to going to, to my first game in over a year but besides that point 
just going over this game, frustrating as it is, and the frustration starts in the first inning because the Phillies get the bases loaded and they do absolutely jack shit with it because Brad Miller grounds into a double play to end the inning. So right off the bat, you struggle with runners in scoring position, but, it, but fear not. Fear not in the bottom of the second inning because Mickey Boniak actually got a hit. The Finally, a center fielder gets an actual hit. And he gets a single. And they know, know what? Nick Maton doubles down the right field line, and he scores Mickey Moniak to make it one nothing. He eventually goes over the third on the throw to home plate. So, hey, the 7th and 8th guys in the lineup driving a run, <laughs> and they got something done. And, like, I'm not making fun of Nick Maton. I'm making fun of Mickey Moniak more, but he actually got a hit. <laughs> it was his only hit of the ball game, but he got a hit. Hopes are still down on him, though. <laughs> and then we go into the bottom of the third inning. Zach Wheeler, early on in this ball game, was doing really well. The pitch count was low. He was getting people out. Not really doing that much damage from the Giants in that standpoint of the game so far. So, go to the bottom of the third inning. Bryce Harper gets on base. JT gets on base. Then Bamboo Brad Miller makes up for the uh, double play in the first inning. And he goes yard to right field, making it a 4 nothing game for the Phillies. And then we go right to the top of the fifth inning. This is when the Giants start to wake up, and this is where Zach Wheeler is starting to struggle a little bit. So I think this was the very first pitch at the top of the fifth inning. Buster Posey sends a ball to deep left field, and it's way out of here to make it a 4-1 game. And then Zach Wheeler, he gets the next two guys out. In comes a pinch hitter, former Philly, Darren Ruff. Oh, boy. And Darren Ruff did pop out to the uh, foul side, but Reese Hoskins was just a couple of feet away from catching that ball, so it was foul. So the, the bat still went on, and uh, he ended up walking Darren Ruff, and then next comes Tommy LaStella, and he crushes the ball to right field, and he makes it a 4-3 to three game just like that. Wheeler, after the Posey home run, gets the next two outs, and then loses Darren Ruff, and then Tommy LaStella makes him pay, making it a one-run ball game. But we go to the bottom of the, the fifth inning. Bryce Harper gets on base with a walk. And then this just monster, even before this actually, JT barely missed a home run. I think he got it off the end of the bat. Brad Miller can't get on base. Alec Bohm comes up the plate. Ball perfectly put down the middle of the plate. Alec Bohm with the beautiful swing. Beautiful swing. Crushes at the left field and at the moonshot out of here. The, the swing, the staring, the pose, the bat flip, everything. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And he made it a 6-3 to three Phillies lead. But then the Giants respond right back in the top of the sixth inning. It's Buster Posey once again. Zach Wheeler, he gets the first two outs of the inning, but then can't get Buster Posey out, and he makes it a 6-4 to four ball game. This is when Zach Wheeler comes out. In comes the bullpen for the Phillies. They get out of that situation in the sixth inning. Phillies can't do anything in the seventh in, in the bottom of the sixth inning, and neither team can do anything in the seventh. And actually, after since that Alec Bohm home run, the Phillies only had I think one hit or two hits after that. So they really didn't generate anything after that Alec Bohm home run. So yeah, you can blame the offense a little bit there too. But I also still think six runs should be enough to win you a ball game. But that's also besides the point as well. So we go into the top of the eighth inning. Connor Brogdon. Hey, you can tell that he kind of doesn't have it. He's having trouble with some command, having trouble with some location, and he was definitely having trouble with that curve, with that changeup. So he does get the first guy out. Evan Longoria, then he doubles. Brandon Belt gets a walk. Then Alex Dickerson, just Connor Brogdon left one hanging right over the middle of the plate, and Dickerson crushes at the right field, and he makes it a 7-6 to six ball game. Then directly after that, Buster Posey gets a single. Brandon Crawford gets a single, and then, okay, he gets a four, next person, Austin Slater, gets a force out to get the second out of the inning, so he got first and third, two out, and Wilmer Flores comes up as a pinch hitter. Gone to left field, crushed 10-6 ball game, and it's just like, oh my goodness, at that point. And I'm and like, yes, you're also wondering, like, why was Connor Brogdon in for that long? I probably would have taken him out after the Buster Posey single. Honestly, I, I probably also would have taken him out after the first home run by Dickerson. But, yeah. Yeah, that definitely could be a questionable decision. That definitely is a questionable decision why you're leaving Brogdon in for that long. Because he clearly just didn't have it on the mound. Trouble with command, especially on that changeup. It just couldn't locate anything. 
So yeah, that's definitely a head scratching decision why he was kept in for so long. But yeah, you like I you also have a very hindered bullpen because you don't have a couple of guys in there. You don't have a couple of pieces. But he eventually does come out of the ball game. Joe Girardi takes him out. And then in comes Ramon Rosso. He comes in for that part of the inning. Then he comes in for the ninth inning. And he gets those guys out of it. Phillies can't do anything in the bottom of the eighth. Phillies go to the bottom of the ninth inning. First two outs, Roman Quinn, what do you expect? He came in as a defensive replacement for Mickey Moniak, and he did nothing. Matt Joyce lined out the right. And then Reese Hoskins almost actually ended the ball game from a nice play by uh, Yastrzemski, but he just missed it in foul territory. And a couple of pitches later, Reese just sent it bomb into the left field stands to make a 10-7 to year last scraping chance of trying to get to a comeback in this ballgame. But then Bryce Harper strikes out, and that's how your ball game ends. And if we look at the box score for tonight, go to the pitching side first. Zach Wheeler, really good early on in this ball game. Clearly didn't have it in the in the fourth and the sixth inning. Just I don't know, just made some mistakes, and the Giants made him pay. And we, and yes, they definitely mentioned so many times on the broadcast that the Giants they're also not the best hitting team in the world. That they score majority of their runs on the home run ball, and they have twenty five plus home runs on the season after tonight. So yeah, majority of their runs have been coming from the home run ball. So we know that's going to be a damaging thing from that Giants team. And a Giants team, they're barely batting over 200 as a team. And I know throughout Major League Baseball, there it's been like a ongoing problem that a lot of teams are having trouble with offense. Like there's barely, like a lot of teams are batting as a team below 250. Like especially if you look at the team like the New York Yankees, that, that team has been off to an atrocious start. And the best team so far offensively-wise has been the Cincinnati Reds. So, yeah, just throughout baseball, there's just been so many teams. Like, it's not just the Phillies that are struggling on the offensive side. But, yeah, it's definitely still very frustrating. I'm not using it as an excuse whatsoever. But it definitely is something that is going on throughout baseball that a lot of teams are having difficulty scoring and generating hits. But still, it's it's very frustrating nonetheless. So Wheeler goes five and two thirds innings, allows five hits, four and runs, three walks, six strikeouts in those three home runs in the ball game. Coonrod comes in, pitches an inning a third, strikes out one. He looked really good on the mound. Brogdon comes in, he gets the loss in this ball game, only goes two of a thirds of an inning, five hits, six earned runs, one walk, no strikeouts, and two home runs allowed. Rosso comes in, pitches an inning a third, allows one hit, and he gets the job done for himself. So yeah, just not good. Just like the rest of the bullpen wise, besides Connor Brogdon, pretty good, but just not good enough from Zach Wheeler at the end of that ball game, and just from Connor Brogdon, he clearly just did not have it tonight. Clearly did not. And if you look at the lineup for tonight, Matt Joyce goes one for four with a walk and a strikeout. Gene Segura left the ball game early in the second inning, so he had to come out. He went zero for two. Reese Hoskins eventually came in for him, goes one for three with that home run. Bryce Harper continues to be hot with the bat. He goes two for three with two walks as well in this ball game. He brought his average up to around 346, and I think his OPS is actually like around over 1,000 at this point. So R R Bryce has actually been really letting it up as of late. But um, it, it just sucks that when he's letting it up, the rest of the offense isn't doing as much around it. JT Ramuto goes one for three. Brad Miller goes one for four with that home run, so it gives him three RBIs on the night. Alec Bohm goes one for four with a two-run shot. Mickey Moniak goes one for three with a run scored. <laughs> Nick Mayton goes one for four with that RBI double in the second inning. Roman Quinn goes 0 for two. And yeah, and then Andrew Knapp came in for one at bat. He was 0 for one. So, like I said, six runs is more than enough to win you a ball game. It definitely is. It should be, though. It definitely should be more than enough to win you a ball game. And actually, I just want to look at the standings real quickly just to see where the Phillies line up. Yeah, so right now the Phillies, they are in second place, 8-9 and nine record as they fall to five, below 500 for the first time this season. And I think in the Phillies in their last 11 games or last 12 games, they're like 3-8 and eight or 3-9. and nine. So yeah, especially since that first week of the season, they haven't been as good. They've been losing a lot of ball games, especially the majority of those that have going on the road. But... Like, if you look at the rest of the division, too, besides the Mets, the Mets haven't played that many games. They're 7-4, and four, so that's why they are in first place. They just, they just have a lot of games that have been postponed or rescheduled. So they're in first place, 7-4. and four. Phillies are in second place, 8-9. and nine. 
Miami, they're below 500. They're 7 and 9. Atlanta, they're below 500. They've been off to a sluggish start to the season. They're 7 and 10. Washington, they're off to a very sluggish start to the season. They're 6 and 9. And they also had their first series of the season postponed as well. Like, yeah, there are a lot of teams right now that are just hovering around 500, below 500, barely above. Like, the only teams that you see that are, like, a couple of games above a 500 are most of the teams in the NL West. The Dodgers, 14-4. and four, The Giants, 11-6. and six, San Diego, 10-8. and eight. But then you see hovering around 500, below 500. And it's the same thing with the American League as well. Like, the American League East, majority of the teams are hovering around 500 or below 500. Central, hovering around or below 500. In the West, there's two teams that are clearly above the rest, Seattle and Oakland so far, and then the rest of the teams are hovering around or below 500. So yeah, it's definitely a common thing in baseball right now. So it's not just the Phillies, but yes, it's still very frustrating nonetheless. And it's you know, definitely not an excuse whatsoever, because yes, the team definitely has to be better in a lot of aspects of the ball game, because... There's a lot of nights where the pitching is really good and the offense doesn't show up. But then when the offense wants to show up, the pitching hasn't been good. Or there's like there hasn't been that ball game where it's just equally collectively been as good together. Like we've barely seen some of those ball games where both the offense and the defense, well, not the defense, the pitching actually. I don't know why it's a defense. Thinking of a completely different sport at this point, but the offense and the de in the in the pitching. Really haven't seen many games of those where they're both like at least somewhat on par with each other, where you get some runs and you get decent pitching in the ball game. I haven't really seen that much this season. It's always been the pitching has been really good, offense has been slacking, or the complete 180 of that scenario. So really frustrating. Brogdon didn't have it tonight. The Phillies have to be way better. We're still really pissed off that I see Gabe Kapler's damn face winning ball games in Philadelphia, taking this damn series. I have no idea what the hell he's putting in that goddamn coconut oil. What the hell did he do with this Giants team? I have no idea. I have no idea. So, you close out this series tomorrow, if it's going to be played tomorrow, against the Giants at 105. I think Zach Eflin is on the mound for tomorrow going up against Anthony D <laughs> Uh, Diski Fani. I just still don't know how to pronounce that guy's name. I am very sorry if I keep completely cons consistently butcher that name. So, if the game is being played tomorrow, technically, I do want to check the weather forecast for tomorrow's ball game. If I do even do have a weather app on this goddamn iPad, but I don't think I do, so I'm not going to waste any more time doing that. And I think the last time when I checked the weather report, it, yes, it, it did say thunderstorms. I think throughout the afternoon, the wind gusts were going to be very high. So hopefully the ball game gets played tomorrow. Hopefully the rain just lets up a little bit. And hopefully the, the forecast is just wrong for tomorrow. Because one, I really want to go to the ball game tomorrow. Because it'll be my first game in over a year. It's basically since 2019, it'll be for my first game. But yeah, I would love to go to the ball game tomorrow. And I hopefully get to see the Phillies win tomorrow. Hopefully I can be some good luck. But it's still very questionable whether tomorrow's game is going to be played or not. So we're definitely just going to have to wait and see until tomorrow morning, most likely, or like right before game time when the rain's most likely going to start. So very frustrating game, just frustrating all around. Lineup, not the best, but they scored runs. The back end of the bullpen wasn't really the best, but Connor Brogdon, Zach Wheeler just didn't, ugh. especially later in his start of this ball game. Just overall, just a very frustrating game. So. What are your thoughts on this video, everyone? What are your thoughts on this Phillies game? And just overall, your thoughts so far to, in the first two and a half weeks of the season with this team. Just how frustrated are you? Are you worried? Are you concerned? Are you just basically, it's still early in the season and there's plenty of baseball left. So I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. And don't forget to drop a like on this video as well. Ch don't forget to check out the Bandit Lines, which I'm a part of. Their links will be in the description below. Don't forget to check out the links to the Flyer Podcast merchandise website and also the link for Flyers Indie Gritty. They will be in the description below as well. And also just don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, everyone. And I will see you next time.